Hey, I'm just letting you know I have a Discord now. I'm going to be doing some fun community stuff soon, so make sure you join. Links in the description below. Guilty Gear Strive is a very complex game. Coming from a franchise with a long category of games and people who've been playing for decades, there's so much you need to know before you start playing Guilty Gear. So mash the fuck out of those buttons and let me present to you what I wish I knew before I started playing Guilty Gear Strive. Firstly, picking a character. Now, a lot of people say pick whichever you think is the coolest and that's going to be your motivator to keep playing, which I have to agree with, except for a few tidbits that kind of lead me to believe some characters are better than others for your first character. So when I first started playing Guilty Gear, I saw Happy Chaos and was like, holy shit. Shit, that is fucking cool. I really wanted to play him. He looked amazing. The gunshots look sick. The fucking super where he pulls up the guns. And it's awesome. Like, you want to play that. Little did I know that he's fucking insanely hard to play with a lot of his combos being very hard to execute. And I didn't know how punishing it was to run out of bullets and concentration, which as a new player, you do every fucking second. As cool as Happy Chaos is, I believe picking a character that doesn't have a negative or punishing mechanic to them would in hindsight be the best thing to do. These characters are characters like Soul Bad Guy, Kai Kiesk, Biken, Biken, Johnny, basically any character that doesn't have any inherent negative consequence for making an error. Because as a new player, you'll be making a lot of these. Characters that I'd suggest avoiding would obviously be Happy Chaos, Asuka, Jacko, and all the one star difficulty characters that are more complicated and hard to use, maybe even up to two star, um, but you might be able to get away with that. But this would also include characters like Ramlethal. While she's very simplistic in design, if you mess up her sword throws, it leaves you in a negative game state where you need to wait for your swords to come back before you can do a lot of her abilities. And I think personally, this sort of detriment gameplay isn't very good for new players that are going to make a lot of mistakes. As a new player, you are going to be punished a fuck ton anyway, and I don't think you should be punished by your character as well. So trying to avoid characters that have these sort of negative game states is probably the best idea. While on the topic of characters, I do think it is best to pick up an easier character rather than a harder one, as a lot of the inputs and mechanics carry over across characters. For example, Elfo can do a close to heavy slash as an open to one of her combos, but so can Sin, Kai, Chip, and a bunch of other characters as well. And it's better to play a character where the combos are a lot more easy to execute so you can gather more universal knowledge about the game instead of worrying about character specific stuff. I think the character specific stuff should come after you have more universal knowledge of how the game's played and you finally decided on what character you do want to play. And if you're worried a character will be too simplistic, don't. There are so many wacky things that are insanely complicated you can do with even the most simple characters that will leave jaws dropped. What the fuck was what that? What was that? That was so good. <laughs> <laughs> to add to this, I think it's okay to swap characters as well. You don't need to dedicate your entire time to the one character. Float around, try a bunch of them and see what works for you and what feels strong when you play it. Then when you know what you really want to pick, lock it in and go hard. Another thing I wish I knew was frame data and how important it was in a fighting game. With Strive being my first actual go at a fighting game, I didn't really pay much attention to frame data. But understanding frame data is the most important thing when you really want to get more into the game. Frame data allows you to properly know what moves will beat your opponent's moves and what you can and can't do with combos, etc. So I suggest using Dust Loop as your Bible as a beginner, as it shows you the hitboxes, hurt boxes, all the frame information, basically everything you need to know about the game alongside good explanations of all of the character's tools and how to effectively use them. This will save you a ton of headache. Something else that I wish I knew before I started Strive was not to take the tower system seriously. With the tower system having such an ebb and flow of skill variation and differences in opponents, it would get really demotivating to go from floor six to floor seven, just to have a bad run and then drop all the way back down to floor 5. The best thing to focus on is not the tower number, but actually improving at the game and trying to get that right first as opposed to the artificial rank. Where once you reach Celestial, it doesn't really matter anyway, as Celestial isn't necessarily a good indicator of how good you are at the game. So don't have any stress about your tower rank, just play the game and try and gather as much info as you can. For this next one, I cannot stress enough how important this is if you really want to get good at Strive. You have to have a friend that plays with you. In Guilty Gear Strive, it is so important to have a friend to play with, especially if you have a friend that's better than you who can teach you, or having a friend around the same skill level so you can have them as a rival and train with. This will motivate you both to continually play the game and you will improve so much quicker. Oh, I'm gonna be in YouTube, aren't I? <laughs> when starting, there will be a ton of informational bloat from character guides, etc. 
with not many actually telling you how as a new player to play these characters. Like it's nice to know if I get a counter hit at this specific height at the early hours of the morning on a Tuesday or Thursday between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius, I can get a wall to wall combo, but that's not intrinsically beneficial to new players who will never apply it. I don't think I even landed the air throw for the first 100 hours of gameplay, let alone these sort of combos. Adding to this, a lot of the combos in Combo Creator are either bad or just impractical. Like there's some good BNBs in there, but probably 80% of them you will never use in a game. And this kind of tricks new players into thinking doing this RC flashy bullshit is the right way to play. Or because it's flashy, it's more efficient or stronger. So I'd say try and stay away from the combo tool unless you're looking to have some fun or just apply your knowledge of the character. Because the combo creator is a massive noob trap and you do not want to get caught in it. So I'd suggest using resources like YouTube, Dustloop, Twitter, and try to find some good bread and butter combos. You want to aim to find at least one wall to wall, one mid screen, one at the wall as a wall break combo, and a block string combo, meaning if they block it, you'll be pretty much safe. Once you have all these elements down, you're practically the fucking avatar. The second you get a hit, you'll be able to convert anywhere on the screen. That's literally all you need. So by cutting out the unnecessary clutter of combos, you can really get a good understanding and feel for the character. And once you're comfortable, you can slowly start adding some counter hit combos and some of the more flashier combos to your arsenal. Speaking of combos, Roman cancels. Holy shit, I did not know how important these were, nor do I see new players use these. This is such a strong mechanic in the game. It can practically do anything. It can combo extend, it can get you out of corners, it can cancel moves if you miss so you don't get punished. Like genuinely, it's such a strong mechanic and new players understandably struggle to do it. A general tip you can keep in your head is dying with 100 meter is bad. You always want to spend that shit even if it means using a Roman cancel to keep a block string going or getting you out of the corner or whatever it is. You can worry about using the Romans optimally later. The habit you need to get into as soon as possible is making sure you win or lose with zero meter remaining. Honestly, there's so many things I wish I knew, but the penultimate thing I wish I knew when I first started playing Strive is that the rat strat is the only fucking way to go, baby. This play style is the only way to play, so log the fuck in. A wise man once told me, The world's greatest swordsman does not fear the second greatest swordsman, but fears that who never will de-doublade. This saying is what you need to live by in Guilty Gear. The best Guilty Gear player will always beat the second best because they know every single move they're going to make. But if you don't have a visible thought process, you will always catch people off guard. This is why you'll always hear people say they struggle versing worse players, or they do better against good players. It's because their actual skill is translating to both. You struggle because they play cluelessly, and you do better against good players because they can't read you. Really, this is getting good at Strive. If you want a guide on how to play like a rat, check out my guide. I'm sure it'll open your eyes. Thank you for listening to my teachings today. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of new people watching this video. So if you're a veteran, drop down in the comments things that you wish you knew before you started playing Strive. And with that being said, adopt the way of the rat and achieve immortality. May the rat kingdom live forever. Play that shit! Thank you very much to my supporters for helping me continue to make videos like this. If you like the video, consider becoming a member. You get a cute little star next to your name in the comments, you get to see new videos early, and some other cool stuff you can see if you hit the join button below. Thank you again very much for your support. Now if you don't mind me, I'm a transcend to godhood. Uh